we want to use the Nexus world, the, the Nexus world viewer for two main purposes. The first one is to explore the world. And the second one you will see is also to be able to claim your land during the city sales. And this is when you will be using your flags. So this is the world viewer. The first aspect that I talked about is pretty obvious. It's a map. Um, and here it's actually centered on where we are right now, our office in Suntec in Singapore. And you can see over this map, this overlay of hexagons. So each one of these hexagonal tiles is um, a plot of land in the Nexus world. One of the 9 billion on land, 33 billion in total. Uh, I actually also want to call out that the land that is actually going to be sold through the Nexus world cell is only 100,000. Yes. Right. So how do you navigate this map? Well, we've made it pretty simple. It's a map, so it navigates like a map. You can pan, you can zoom right, by pinching or by using uh, the, the button here in the corner. Um, for ease of navigation, the moment you actually zoom out past a certain level, we remove the hex grid. Mm -hmm. It's pretty messy otherwise. Well, not messy, but it just gets a little bit Distracting. Um, distracting, yeah. exactly. Um, so let me just zoom a little back in so that we can see. I know, right. So you see here the, the world. You have the legend here for the land rarity. Uh, the common tiles here um, are in light gray. Blue is for rare. Purple is for epic. And yellow is for mythical. Mm. Um, also, if you want to have a clearer view of uh, what is inside uh, the real world, you can click on this little eye button and toggle off the overlay. You still see the hexagons are there, mm -hmm. and they still highlight when you hover over the map. So I can see exactly where the lines end yes. on the street. Absolutely. So this is how it works. Nice. So basically, this is we talked about. It's hexagon. You can pan in. We can we can zoom. We can toggle around. And then when it goes out, the the tiles disappear. Um, maybe let's take a look at. Let's see. We have this bar on top. Um, how do we find locations? Right. So <clears throat> pretty much like on a Google Map, you can uh, search for uh, a location. There's different ways to do it. The simplest way is to just type the place that you want to look at. You can also paste the Google map URL uh, or even latitude longitude. So let me first, I've previously uh, copy pasted some latitude longitude coordinates. Those are actually pretty easy to get off a of Google map. So if you type that, your world viewer will load in this location. So this is a location that I chose in, in Berlin in Prince mm. Lauerberg. So in shout Berlin. out to the people there in Germany. Um, another way to do it is, um, so I'm just going here quickly to another tab to copy paste uh, a Google map URL. So let me just clear the search here. So here, just copy pasted my Google map URL. I hit send and here it is. We're now in the Ginza district in Tokyo. Um, but otherwise, the simplest way is to just type Paris, France. I mean, where else? And our friend just really? says search for towel Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Right, so I mean, I could, I could just pan. I know my way around the city, so I know it's exactly here. But um, I could just go and type it here. Should I type it in French? Can we? Oh, we can type in different language. Can of we? Of course. Oh wow! And finally, if you want to just go back to where you are, you just hit that little pin there, and this sends you back to Which your current is location. Where we exactly are where right we now. Where we are right now. We are dialing in from here. So let me do a summary. So the search bar lets you um, search uh, by the longitude, latitude, yeah. and then the Google Map URL. What else? Uh, uh, places of interest, which is a free text search. Okay, so as well as the cell ID, which I will explain later. But each of these hexagons has a cell ID, which is very easy to find. So if you've copy pasted it somewhere, you can just drop it into the search bar. Okay. Cell ID is something it. to remember though, but we'll talk about that later. Right. And then the other one is I can click on my location. If my location is on, I'll just go to this, uh, for example. Right. So um, anything else you want to add on about this part? Um, yeah, just one interesting little detail. And actually, if I go back to Paris, you will see, see how here the hexagons I'm 
nice and neatly shaped. Mm -hmm. uh, and how, when you go to, um, let me actually just go back to Paris here, this one, how the hexagons oh, are slanted. slightly slanted. Yeah. yeah. This is because of the projection of a sphere onto a 2D map, what is called the Mercator projection, which is basically projecting that sphere onto a map. Mm. And that um, that is what makes the areas that are typically near the uh, near the poles uh, much larger. Mm -hmm. So typically, this is why you have Antarctica that just looks like this continuous landmass at the bottom of your map, but it's actually really kind of an island. Mm -hmm. uh, and Greenland that looks so big when it's in fact a lot smaller. And for the same reason, the hexagons there are also moving a little bit. Um, in the shape of them is moving a little bit for that same reason. But know that every hexagon um, basically has the same size. Mm, I see. So that's why if you're just wondering why my hexagons a little bit sideways when, I, when I'm in that part of the world, or why do they appear larger when I'm in the other part of the world, that's because uh, of that uh, projection. But all the hexagons are roughly of the same size. Oh, that's a very good point to note. And I want to remind you, let's talk about the rest of the things, for example, the details of each towel. Right. That's what we're talking about the towels right now. Okay, so well, let's look at this one. And I believe this is uh, Paris. Right. So when you click on a towel, you will see the detail panel where there is more information about this stuff. So um, what do you see at a glance? You actually have the cell ID, which I was telling you about. So you can mm. easily copy it. You can actually also use this button to copy so it. So this is the cell ID we've been talking about yeah. just now. This is, uh, so this is the cell ID of this hexagon and it is unique, right? Uh, you, uh, I don't think that you can actually see the URL bar, but it is actually also referenced in the URL of the world viewer, uh -huh. which means that if you actually um, copy paste that out, you would reload the world viewer on that exact on the spot. Cell, right? mm. So it's, it's a unique ID. Um, when it comes to identifying the location of the cell, we've of the cell, we've also uh, added here the latitude and longitude coordinates. But what is interesting to you here is um, two things, um, well, more than two things really, but the first two things you probably want to look at is uh, the rarity. Well, that is already, uh, that you, would, you should already know from the color, but it is mentioned here, it's rare. Mm -hmm. And the biome, which is here, grassland. So the notion of biome is something that we have in the Nexus world. There are four biomes. There's grassland, there's rocky, there's sandy or desert, and there's snowy. So grass, rock, sand, and snow. Right. And then there is water, oh. but obviously water is not land. So no, water you is cannot water. Okay. buy water, right? Mm. So each land is one of four biomes. And then these biomes have features. So the features will show here. They are not yet being revealed. But by features, we mean... Let's take the example of a grassland. Grassland would have, say, um, it would have trees, it would have streams, it would have rocks, it would have, etc. So these are features. Features right? of the land. Right. So here you would see the list of all the features of that specific land. So we will show them soon in that tab in the land viewer. Mm -hmm. um, each land type has a different number of features. So a common land would have five features. Rare land has seven, epic has eight, mythical has nine. So the higher the rarity, the more features it will have. Right, but also the higher the grade of these features. Oh, the right. grade of the features right. as well. Right. So mythical land will have features that you only find in mythical land. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. I see. Um, other than that, anything worth noting when we look at the details of the land? Um, well, the one thing I didn't mention yet is the ownership and the availability, right? So, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Right now, we haven't uh, opened the land for sale yet. So none of that land is owned and all of that land is available. Once, well, we'll see later actually what it looks like uh, <laughs> when you want to claim a land. But if you successfully claim a land, then obviously it will no longer be available because it will be yours. And this will show in that details panel. Um, yes, the last thing that I want to mention is that what we will have here uh, in the near future will actually be the land art. Right now, what you're seeing is 
basically a, a zoom in on that actual uh, tile, but it will show what the Nexus World land actually looks like. Right, so this is a grassland biome of mythical grade. So it's uh, so it has technically these nine features, but actually the way we've built them uh, is such that you uh, we've we've really blended them together. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, but the interesting thing is with the number of features that each biome has um, makes each plot of land unique. So that means each plot of land have had different features and then it, it's, you don't have another piece of land that is exactly the same. Exactly. Oh, wow. And I'm not talking about the 100,000 that are for sale. I'm talking about the 9 billion on land will all be different from one another, whether it is a common land or a mythical land. So technically speaking, you, we, the product team now have 9 million pieces. Billion. Billion pieces. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, good luck, guys, <laughs> to, yeah. to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, but it, it's <laughs> worth it. And um, we have a pretty talented art team. I, I love what they've come up together. I love this piece of, this piece of art. I, I love this um, central feature there. You see this reindeer that is covered with it's, vegetation. It's so beautiful, and, and it has so many details on it as well. So this is what a grassland could look like. One of the grasslands will be exactly this one. Uh, one of it. Mm -hmm. But there will be like another 9 billion. Well, 9 billion divided by 4 because we have 4. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, correct, yeah. correct, correct. So we have, again, grassland. We have... Uh, Desert, rocky, and snowy. Oh, wow. Okay. This is the land art preview we're showing. Do you have another example, perhaps? Um, right now, I'm just going to show this one. Let's talk about the city launches. Let's. The city sales will start uh, in December. December. You know. um, and the way to claim land is to have a flag, at least a flag, and to plant your flag on the land. So what I'm showing you now is um, uh, it's a static image of uh, what the world viewer will look like when the city cells open. So um, it's, it's no longer the, the, live, um, the live product that I was showing you earlier. So bear with me uh, while I walk you through this image. So here I have selected uh, this land here. It's a, a land of epic grade, which is actually quite nicely located in the um, bustling shopping area of Orchard Road. In Singapore. Yeah. yeah. So you see it's available. Um, it's grassland and it's epic. It's an epic, so I could claim it with nine flags. So you see that the button here in the, in the details panel will uh, allow me to claim an available land with the right amount of flags. Mm -hmm. um, when you do that, it will uh, actually invoke your MetaMask wallet and you will uh, have to sign the transactions for that NFT to be minted and to be yours. Um, what else is different from the main world viewer? Well, first you see, if you look here on the left-hand side in the panel, there's now two entries. The first one is a world viewer is what you saw earlier. It's to navigate the world. The city sales section is going to be limited to the area that will be on sale for that city. So, for example, let's say uh, we launch uh, Paris, right? So only Paris will be available. Right. Here. So there will be there will be an area that um, will be delimited, and you will only be able to view that area in the city cell view. You will see on the top right corner next to your uh, next to your to your login uh, ID, you see the number of flags that you hold in your wallet. So in this case, I have 33 flags, more than enough to actually claim that land. Um, that little button will allow you to top up flags. And finally, this is tracking how much land is still available for sale. Um, the way it works is that when we will be delimiting a land sale area, uh, I'm going to give an example of 50,000 tiles. Mm. Um, we have Singapore here on screen, right? So let's stick to that example. Singapore is roughly 50,000 tiles, the size of the entire island. Mm -hmm. But we will not be selling all 50,000 tiles. We will be selling, example, um, 1,000 tiles, right? And if you break it down by the rarity ratio, that's 817 common, um, a hundred and 
uh, 50 rare, 30 um, epic, okay. and three mythical, right? Mm -hmm. That adds up to a thousand. And you know, this is roughly how we will uh, break it down following those ratios. So only a thousand tiles can be sold. But if there's any thousand tiles within these 50,000, Okay, so let me get it straight. So let's say, for example, we're launching Singapore, that's 50,000 tiles worth of land, but only the 1,000 is available for sale. So we don't detect which part of this 1,000. You, you will choose from this 50,000. And then once this 1,000 gets selected, that's it for Singapore. Exactly. Oh, that's nice. That means there could be, let's say, although there's only three medical available, there could be, I don't know, like... Although there's three for sale, but there's 150 medical to choose from to pick. Yes. Okay, so once that three is being uh, chosen, uh, no more medical will be on sale. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So in this example, if I were to claim this epic land with nine flags, the moment the transaction goes through and it is minted, the count of epic would go from 22 to 21. Mm. And when this goes down to zero, the quota for that rarity is sold out. Oh, I guess well, this part is very important. People will be staring at these right. numbers. <laughs> and, and the flags, that, the last thing is the flags that you see on screen, those are lands that have already been claimed. So the moment the land has been claimed with a flag or several flags, uh, then it is marked as such. So uh, yeah, these have already been claimed. Um, but the one that I am on has not been claimed. So there is a chance here for me to claim that one. So um, looking at this, this particular example has 33 flags in the bag. And over here, it needs nine. That means it's enough. Let's say if I have less than nine, then this transaction wouldn't go through. Right. You need to have enough flags, obviously, to be able to transact. So once I uh, plant it, right? no question, right? So right now I'm seeing one flag on each that's being claimed. Let's see if this town requires nine flags. I will still see one flag on the thing, right? Yeah, you will still see one flag. Otherwise, it would get a little bit messy on the um, on the UI. So the 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 color already denotes a rarity. So I would basically huh. know that that person there who claimed that mythical has actually spent 27, 27 flags, flags to claim it. Mm, Absolutely. I see, I see. Um, the one last thing I want to call out is that because um, during the city sale, you will be uh, transacting with smart contracts um, and the world viewer will need to, um, to work with MetaMask. Mm -hmm. The world viewer on mobile needs to be accessed through the MetaMask browser. If you're only viewing the world, uh, what I was showing earlier on, if you're just browsing, uh, it's perfectly fine. It will work on Safari. It will work on Chrome. Um, it will work on, on any browser. But if you want to transact uh, and plant a flag to claim the land... It has you, to be the MetaMask you, browser. Exactly. You cannot do that on your mobile Safari, on your mobile Chrome. Mm, understand. Uh, it needs to be through the MetaMask browser because that is the only way you can actually uh, get the smart contract to Mm. to give you that land. So to summarize this, it's very similar to when we have to buy our tokens. Um, right. If you're using a laptop on Chrome, it's okay because you have that MetaMask plugin. But if right. you're on the mobile, only the MetaMask uh, app browser links you to the MetaMask itself. Then you can do the transaction. So, But uh, don't worry, we'll totally remind you guys again when the city launches are available. For, for now, any browser can be used to see the world viewer because we're, no, we're not transacting right now. Right.